in the sky, on land, underwater. There's no way you can escape this man. I mentioned a moment ago, do you remember a few years ago in the real dry summer, Anthony Murphy flew the drone up around Newgrange. Well, the rest is history, but what was discovered back then was simply amazing. Well, he's at it again, and this time it's underwater on the River Boyne from Mythical Ireland. Anthony Murphy, hello again. Hello, Jerry. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining me on the show. It wasn't... Um, your man, uh, the dolphin that attracted you to the river, was it initially before you found this stuff? Actually, that's part of the story, yeah. <laughs> I had a, I got a new drone uh, two weekends ago and uh, was testing it out in various locations. And on the Sunday, sort of took it in my head to go down to the Boyne and see, just on the off chance, you know, that I might get a bit of aerial footage or photographs of the dolphin. Mm. Well, I didn't. I didn't find the dolphin, but I found something else. <laughs> <laughs> you found a log boat. Now there was a log boat. Uh, it's in my mind. Was found in the Boyne some years ago. Well, quite a number of these have was actually there? been yeah. found. Okay. According to yeah. National Monument Service, um, I think a dozen log boats have been found in the Boyne River in the past couple of centuries. Probably the most best known example was discovered by a group of anglers up near the cable bridge there at Old Bridge uh, in 2016. That was later dated by the Dendro, or not the, by the carbon dating uh, department of Queen's University in Belfast and found to be Neolithic in date. So 5,000 years old, which is incredible when you think about it. Um, and uh, so this wouldn't be the first and certainly won't be the last uh, mm. to be found uh, in, in the bed of the Boyne. And where did you come across yours? And what are you talking about? Are you talking about similar age to the one you mentioned just a, a moment ago there? Well, I've been speaking to uh, an expert on Irish dugout boats. The of, of official terminology is dugout boats, but you and I would refer to them as log boats. Mm. Um, says that they're notoriously difficult to date. And in fact, the craft were similar in design from the Neolithic right through to medieval times. Um, the first one that I found, the one that we're referring to, um, is between the townlands of Mel and Rathmullen, would basically be between the two public parks there. If you walk along the river at Mel or uh, at the ramparts, uh, it would be out there between those two walkways. Um, he reckons that it is um, medieval in date, so <laughs> unfortunately even that can't be narrowed down yeah. without f- further sort of dating techniques sometime between 400 AD and around 1650 AD mm, Amazing, really really old and preserved you know in a, in a form that's amazing after all of these years Did the We haven't had a lot of rain up until yesterday the bank holiday wouldn't it be typical it would deluge us but did the low water conditions you know with little rain help? Well, there are, yeah, there's, it has to be said that there are a few things that are sort of acting in favour of these fines. By the way, I should clarify that this is not my discovery. Mm. National Monument Service is now saying that that first boat uh, was in fact reported to them back in 2020. I've, sa- I've found two more since. Yeah. The low, the low water, of course, at this time of year, it just so happened that the, 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 the Monday when I found it, uh, was the day, the night of the full moon. So the full moon means higher full tides and lower low tides, yes. as it were. The water is particularly low. Another thing that people forget is that the river is a lot less polluted now mm. than it was 20 years ago. Jerry, you and I will remember mm. the days when raw sewage used to be pumped into Shocking. the Boyne River Shocking. and it used to be a brown, cloudy mess. Mm. The river is excessively clear. And of course, the other thing is the drone technology, which enables us a top down view. And perhaps it is a case that when you're walking along the river, in fact, it is a case that when you're walking along the river, uh, unless these things are exposed, uh, if they're even slightly slightly underwater. It's very difficult to see them from an oblique angle. It's far yes. easier to see them from vert- vertically, from top down, as it were, you know. So this is a new one you've picked up. The one one of these you've been looking at is new. Uh, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I know that the first one uh, was previously reported. Yeah. National Monuments say that they are aware of, quote unquote, a few log boats in the bed of the Boyne. I have found three and I found another couple of suspect items which will be examined uh, by an expert uh, at the earliest opportunity. The potential here is, I mean, there's three boats in a stretch of river that is less than 500 metres. 
Um, now, of course, that's a shallow stretch of the river. Mm. Uh, anybody who's familiar with the area uh, up there where Anglo Printers Factory is, between there and the Bridge of Peace, the river is kind of widens out and it's a very shallow area of the river where you see a lot of trees. So any trees that are blown down by winter storms further upriver get carried down by the waters of the Boyne, but they get lodged in this kind of shallow area. And uh, I'm, I'm told that in the 1950s, a log boat was found uh, somewhere in the vicinity, somewhere between St. Mary's Bridge and the Boyne Viaduct. So they're not it's not it's not a rare thing to find them. What I'm excited about is the possibility that uh, if and when some of them are retrieved and dated, we could be looking at craft that were in use when New Grange was being built, which I'm, I think is absolutely extraordinary, you know. And And the reason they're there, Anthony, you know, did they... Were they lost to the to the river? Uh, were they finished their working life? I suppose there's very little information is there around that uh, type of thing. Uh, that would be probably virtually impossible yeah. to tell. Yeah. And I mean, um, there's a few jokes going around about it that perhaps there's a fleet of them, uh, and perhaps they weren't very good mariners if their boats sank. But of course, we don't have the original builders or users of these boats to tell us their mm. stories. What I'm fascinated by, though, is the fact that the wood and apparently these are mostly made of oak the wood is actually preserved by the water of the river Mm. and when they're brought out of the river often they can deteriorate very quickly so the recovery and preservation of them is apparently a complex and expensive operation and i believe without sort of having a formal statement on it i believe that in some cases the policy is just to leave them alone for the time being until such time as that can be accommodated you know yes and god knows when you lift them when they hit the air well what that would uh, the implications that would have but that's for another day just before you leave us i saw you commenting on the awful vandalism that's been happening not once now twice at lock crew cairns have you uh, something to say to uh, uh, anybody listening today who might have ha- any hand act or part in in this well it is a sad um uh, affair Uh, Unfortunately, it seems also to be a symptom of COVID lockdowns, perhaps a combination of boredom and then accessibility to these sites uh, where there are much fewer people around than there would be normally. Um, look, these things are very precious. What people forget is this, you know, there there are 40,000 ring forts in Ireland. They're very uh, commonplace. There aren't 40,000 passage tombs. Passage tombs, chambered cairns, we might call them, are the equivalent of Newgrange. These are smaller versions of Newgrange and Outh and Outh. They date to more than 5,000 years ago. Uh, They are uh, not just nationally precious monuments, they're globally precious monuments. They are a remnant of a far distant age of the past. It is awful. It is a shameful, awful, sad thing uh, to see them being defaced. It's bad enough if you took spray paint to them, but to actually use a stone to carve your name onto this precious megalithic art dating from more than 5,000 years ago, it, it really is beyond belief. It's certainly not a cool thing to be doing yeah oh look I say here here Anthony cop yourselves on and turn your energies elsewhere leave the past and our right. history alone please yeah. Anthony great to talk to you again take care thanks Jerry. Always thanks for joining me Anthony Murphy there from Mythical Ireland we've had a number 